Hello, and welcome back to the final exam review. We are starting with problem 10 today. We're going to do just problems 10 and 11 on this video. They both relate to one sample means, quantitative data. Number 10 says, at Bernalisa Pueblo, the method of tree ring dating gave the following dates AD for an archaeological exca excavation site. So we have dates here. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. They gave us a normal probability plot. So we can see that we um, it follows linear. So we can say that the data is normal because it's a small data set. And it looks like it's a little bit left skewed. <clears throat> it says construct a 90% confidence interval for the true mean of all tree ring dates from this archeological site. Show formulas, substitutions, and answer. So we're gonna go to our formula packet and we're looking for the, the confidence intervals for chapter eight, because we have one sample mean, we're going to be using this one. And we don't know the population standard deviation, so we're gonna be using the T distribution. So we're going to be using X mean, the sample mean plus or minus the T, and alpha is equal to one minus 0.9 or 0.1, because we want a 90% confidence. So alpha divided by two is gonna be 0.05. So we need the T of 0.05, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in our sample. So our degrees of freedom is equal to eight. And then we have multiplied by the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of N. So we have to find our sample mean in Desmos, our critical t-value, 0.05, and 8 is degrees of freedom. So 8 is our degrees of freedom, and we're going to go over to 0.05. So that's going to be 1.86. 1 1.86. 1 and then we're gonna get our sample standard deviation from Desmos, and then it will be divided by the square root of N, which is the square root of nine. Now, we can also use our program in Desmos um, to check this, what we come up with. So let's go ahead and move over to um, Desmos, put our data into a table, that's what I did. Um, and then I'm going to find the mean of X1. And because it's a sample, it's just STDEV of X1. And so I'm using 1265.67 for my mean. And my standard deviation is going to be 42.05. Now I'm going to my decimal sort of program for the confidence interval for means. Um, this also does the hypothesis test if you want, but we're just going to use the confidence interval. So my sample size is nine. My sample mean was 1265.67. My sample standard deviation is 42.05. And we don't need this because we're not doing a hypothesis test. However, we do need our alpha, and alpha is point. one zero. It will take care of the alpha divided by two when we go down here and click on the confidence interval, which was already a drop down that was already clicked. So once I click on that, it goes down. It tells me that our confidence is 0.9, which is what we wanted 90%. Here's our lower bound and our upper bound. So my interval is one, two, three, nine point six one rounded to two decimals. And the upper interval is 1291. The upper boundary for the interval is 1291.73. I'll share with you what I have written on my paper. It's right here. It says, does the confidence interval found above contain the true average ring date for the site? Now, not necessarily we're only 90% confident that it's going to contain that. 
we are 94% confident that it does, but we and we hope so. The confidence interval size would blink if the confidence level was lowered. Okay, so if the confidence level is lowered, when the confidence level lowers, right, when this gets smaller, alpha gets bigger. So alpha is getting bigger going to the left. So when alpha gets bigger, our T values get smaller. So when our T value right here gets smaller, our interval will decrease. Okay. What are these said? The confidence interval size would blink if the sample size was raised. Your sample size is in the denominator here. So when your denominator gets bigger, your fraction gets smaller, which means that your error bound will get smaller. And that is also going to decrease your interval. Okay. Letter E says, explain why it is important that you be given a normal probability plot and box plot for this data. And that's because we have a small sample size. And, and we need to show it is normally distributed. Okay. And that's so we can use our central limit theorem. Now it says, oh, construct a confidence number for the true standard deviation. So we're not doing that one. I meant to delete that. We don't do confidence intervals for standard deviations. So that's the end of problem number 10. And that's dealing with one sample means, quantitative data. Let's go to question 11. Question 11 says, in normal seasons, an average tobacco production of large Cuban tobacco growers is 1,000 bushels. After a cool season, agricultural officials are predicting a bumper crop of more than usual bushels. State the hypothesis symbolically. So it's a one sample mean, and this is what they usually think it is. So we think the mean is equal to 1,000, but they're proposing after a cool season, they're predicting a bumper crop of more than usual. So we're thinking it's gonna go up with cooler weather. Is this a right-tailed, left-tailed, or two-tailed? It's pointing to the right, the right-tailed test. Okay, suppose a random sample of 51 Cuban tobacco producers had a mean of 1,105 bushels. A researcher conducts a test and they find a p-value of 0 0.075. Are these findings significant at the 0 0.05 level? So remember, we always compare our p-value on the left to our alpha on the right. And we only reject if it's less than, but it's greater than. So we do not reject H0, which also means there is not significant findings. So what would it mean to take a type to make a type two error? So we did not reject H zero, um, which means we conclude the crop did not increase with cooler weather. But in reality, it did. That would be a type 2 error. Is it sensible or possible to lower the probability of making a type 2 error to zero? No, you can never completely eliminate error. It's not possible. 
question 10. That's question 11. So catch me back for some more review questions. <laughs>